Oh, it stinks. Oh. <laughs> so this is our silk monochrome dry, and I've stretched it over some painting stretcher bars. Once it's taut and tight, we're no longer looking at the creases or the movement of the fabric anymore, and you can see the colour a lot more and the variation of the stain. So it's still relatively complex. So I want to try and reduce this even further to try and work out what its average median colour is, what is its standard. So I went to the paint shop and I got a bunch of these different paint samples too light and warm, too light, light and cool. Just depends on the, the angle as well. This is too dark. It's pretty close. Ah, uh, that's close. What's this? Wyndham 3311. Wyndham is the color that would represent our little journey through the streets, my labor in cleaning and dying. I want to mix a color for this monochromatic painting, which is the exact color as the reverse side of the canvas. So I'm going to start with an acrylic white base. Always mix more than you think you're going to need. But I'm actually going to leave some white in case the color gets too dark. I'm cheating a little bit and using a color that's kind of roughly close to this. See how it's too warm? Uh, this has gray or cool tertiary color in it. So I'm gonna tint, a tint is any color with white. The trick is to just do a little bit at a time. You can see that's getting tonally similar. And with acrylic paint, you need to keep in mind that it's always gonna dry one shade darker. All right, I'm gonna add a couple of tiny drops of Payne's Gray, which is actually ultramarine blue with a little bit of black. And this having red and yellow in it, and this having blue in it, it has all three primaries, which makes it a tertiary color, even though it's mostly white. So this is gradually darkening. Getting there. So you can imagine when this dries and we give that another coat, it's going to start getting a little darker. Let's just let that dry because I think that's possibly going to be pretty close. This is a monochrome um, and I've color matched the hue to hopefully something close to the reverse side of the canvas. So it's kind of interesting this way because even though this is an abstract image, it's a representation, it's a picture of itself. It's like an illusion or a disguise, a picture of its own material. So a lot of my work is like this, even something so reduced as this has a kind of riddle of sorts. So I've made two works so far using monochromatic painting as a cover uh, for geometric shapes and sculptures really. So cover here I was thinking about in terms of shrouding, of coating, like even a, a coat of paint, as well as copying, a cover band, reproducing. The geometric shapes I chose are themselves simplified reductions of basic furniture. So for these two other works that I made. One of them is a very standard Australian clothes drying rack, which is like two X's. It's very familiar to most people. And then the other one, it's kind of a little bit more abstract, but it, it does evoke a barbecue cupboard. The structures of these objects are made out of metal, either powder coated stainless steel, wood, or aluminum sheets. If we fundamentally break down these shapes, which is possible for a lot of the stuff that we see in the world. You know, here it's just two simple X's. This is a table. Here it's just three planes like this. Obviously, maybe not structurally sound depending on the material, but as a, a very simplified drawing in reduced 
terms, it's three basic lines and then four lines, we've got a chair. And then this rectangle is a cylinder, which is a lot like the artwork prop that I made. Two cylindrical poofs made out of canvas, screen printing and metallic paint. So very basic, simple geometric shapes form the basis of a lot of my sculptures. I'm going to make a mini AK work where I'm going to repeat this in a new format. So I'm going to grab a chair that I made earlier this morning, which is a very simple chair. You'll notice it's 50% ratio here. This is square. Here, this is also 50% of this, so it's become quartered. It's creating volume with these very simple planes. But this is not mine, this is Donald Judd. So Donald Judd did a series of chair designs. So basic iterations of the same form, playing around with different ways of dividing. Here you've got a diagonal piece. Here I've just drawn them in terms of how I see them in their most simplistic form using an economy of line. The idea of a cover is interesting to me because it kind of changes, it kind of keeps the basic form of the geometric object but it mystifies it but it also simplifies it. So you kind of know what's probably under there but all the noise and extra information has gone. It's just a, its most simple form. In some way, it's a little bit of a shame that the Donald Ch Judd chair is so reduced. Uh, it might be nice also if it were a highly decorative chair or something that had a lot of flourish or unnecessary parts to it. But I think there's something nice also about the idea of remaking kind of famous and reduced design like the art object that is totally DIY and functional. Beautiful, beautiful, creamy surface. Ah, so nice. So I'm not really sure how this is going to behave, but like anything, you just gotta try. It's looking cool. So I kind of have formed it actually in a way that I didn't expect to. I thought I would probably shape it more to the back and tailor it, but I kind of liked these soft forms and I like this kind of flowing stuff. I even chose to not glue the back because I think gluing it will start to interfere with the canvas and I like that clean kind of edge of the cut. So it's kind of like a ghost in a way, which I think is a sort of lovely idea when we're thinking about the monochrome, especially in terms of modernist like, and minimalist, sorry, like Donald Judd. Um, it's a, it's a little bit haunting, I guess, like a shroud. If I'm to reflect on this, having made it now, I think it's slightly problematic because it's not keeping true to the project. We're talking about convergence. Whereas here, I'm not sure if it's converged and then kind of come back out. I like that it's become an entirely new form. You kind of can't really tell it's a chair, but it's still in relation to the body and where one might sit. It's familiar, which is nice.